Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 7th. First up, this is from my friend Aaron sent this in, Aaron B. This was, I talked about last week about the sport umbrella, uh, kind of like an umbrella that folds open and makes kind of like a lean-to shade type of shelter. There's another one similar to this called Easy Go Sunshade which retails around $36.99. I'll have the link down below. It's very similar to, um, it's just not an umbrella type, it's just it folds out into a shelter type and then it folds up into a circular type of deal. $36.99, so slightly cheaper. You save about 10 11 bucks. but so far I've been checking out for the entire week and every time it's been listed as sold out, you can still add it to the cart, but I'm not really sure if this thing is maybe discontinued or something. Maybe they're just out of stock, and maybe with uh, cold weather coming up, maybe they'll be back in stock, but it's called EasyGoProducts.com. Link will be below to check it out if you wish to. Next up, this was sent to me by Jeff F. This is in Omaha. He's from Omaha, so this is from Omaha Metro and Omaha.com, a workshop for people to learn and create $7 million digital library, do space it's called the do space and it's eager to open so it's opening actually today in omaha the maker of omaha's do space are done building it now they're eager to see what people will do with it the free technology library and digital workshop will open at 9 a.m saturday in a renovated former bookstore at 7205 dodge street i think it's a former barnes and noble maybe not really sure but what it is is basically it's an on-site maker fair it just gives people access to all kinds of equipment and technology basically for free. The membership for the DoMaker Place is free. Uh, the only thing they charge for is if you use certain materials, like if you're printing stuff and you use paper, they're going to charge you for that. If you're using the 3D printers, which they will have classes and teach you how to use 3D printers, then the materials, you'll have to cover the cost of that. But everything else and the use of it and I guess the lessons, the teaching, everything is perfectly free. And if you're not a member and you wish to go inside and use your own device, you can use their wireless for free. So it's a computer technology kind of uh, library, free library. So this is kind of cool. Uh, I would love the chance, really, if they had more stuff like this around the Chicagoland area, to go in and learn how to do 3D printing myself. But I would say if you live anywhere in the Omaha area or anywhere near, take advantage of this. I mean, how many people are going to set you up with this kind of equipment to use and this kind of technology to use for absolutely free? I would take no chance at passing this kind of a thing up. This is really super cool. And this next article is from VentureBeat.com. Lytro, Lytro dives into virtual reality filmmaking with the debut of its Emerge video camera. I've talked about the Lytro light ray cameras before. Uh, they call it a camera, but more technically it's not really a camera. It's an, a light ray imaging system that can do a lot more things than a camera can because it actually computes at the exact positions and um, the angles and the vectors of the light rays themselves. Well, they've taken and made this thing into uh, kind of looks similar to a black basketball on a tripod. And this thing is going to be so expensive, what they're going to have to do is end up renting it out to film crews. But you can get immersed into virtual reality with this thing just like nobody's business. They've got a, a video to where they kind of show a simulation of what this is going to be like. And I guess a lot of the problems with using conventional cameras and trying to do an immersive experience is you still don't get it to where it looks to most people's eyes and the psychological part of it to where everything looks the way it does if you are actually in the real space. I guess this is going to take care of a lot of those problems. And... Um, so basically, they're going to be using this for gaming, for all kinds of stuff where you want an immersive type of experience. And I don't, if it's anything like what they're saying it's going to be like on here, it's going to be pretty fantastic. They expect the price. If you want to rent this thing for filmmaking or making your virtual reality movie or whatever you want, it's going to be somewhere between $2,500 and $5,000. And the reason it's not calling it a camera is rather over simplistic is because you're going to get this spherical ball and you're also going to get a complete server full of hard drives because the computational power you're going to need with this you're basically getting a, a light ray tracing machine with a uh, complete uh, digital computer to uh, render it in multiple hard drives so you're going to get a complete whole system in, in this kind of thing right here um, uh, let's see, just, I'll read just a little bit of here. Emerge is essentially offering a new way of developing re virtual reality content. The company believes that its mathematical model will create immersive worlds that feel similar to being in the scene. 
The key is in processing natural light flow so that no matter which way you're looking, standing or moving, the movie has the optical qualities of real life. So although it films from one position, since it knows each direction can compute what way, ways the light rays are coming from, where they're bouncing off, where they're going to, you can basically move around anywhere within the scene that's within the range of this uh, system and be able to just walk around in the scene and, and be able to be in any place and have everything render out to where you can turn around, up, down, and everything's just going to render properly. So I don't think it gets any better than that. If this thing is uh, what it looks to be, this is going to be really fantastic. And finally, last up, a few people sent me this uh, among them, and I might have even forgotten somebody if I did let me know, but among them, Lonnie B. and Rex C. This is about the aluminum, the transparent aluminum glass that's going to be super, super strong. Now, in a way, that is true. I mean, it's probably, if the tests um, are accurate, what they say, it's probably going to be better than the Gorilla Glass, better than the regular glasses we have now. And Some people have even said if you can get a coffee cup made out of this stuff, this type of glass and you drop it you'll probably damage your floor rather than damage the coffee cup but um, this title in extreme text says it right it says no Japanese no Japanese scientists haven't invented unbreakable glass what the thing is is when they come up with a new type of glass like this for example gorilla glass then gorilla glass 2 and gorilla glass 3 with each one being stronger than the last one is they don't use it to make your screen more difficult to break um, what they do is they make the glass even thinner because they can get away with it. In other words, the stronger material, they might be able to make it half as thick and still be as unbreakable as the material was before. Not totally unbreakable, but as unbreakable. So it will probably end up being with this thing too, with this transparent aluminum glass that, yeah, they'll just, because it is stronger, they'll just make the screen just that much thinner and it won't be easy to break but it probably still will be breakable and they'll use the extra depth in the phone either to make the phones a little bit thinner or to stuff more stuff in the into the same size and also you've got the cost factor too when anything costs a little bit more too say it costs twice as much as the current is Gorilla Glass 3 well if you make it half as much thick then you can get more you know you can purchase it for pretty much about the same price you're just purchasing less material because it's half the thickness. Now I'm just guessing on that. I'm saying equivalent. They give you the actual measurements here of how they've, uh, for example, Corning's Gorilla Glass 2 was 20% thinner than Gorilla Glass. Gorilla Glass 3 was even thinner down to 0.4 millimeter compared to 0.55 for Gorilla Glass. So it's just, you know, as they can make it thinner and keep it the same strength, that's what they're going to do. It's going to be about the cost savings more than anything else. So anyway, thank you everybody that contributed. I appreciate it every week. It makes my show very easy to do. And take care everybody. I will catch you next week.